So seemingly with uh, victory within their grasp, I think on the uh, Catholic left, uh, the only thing they really need to do is just uh, uh, maintain uh, their position and wait for the Catholic right to come and help them. So they're going to move uh, the that infantry unit forward uh, like that to, to provide fire support, but that's all. The key thing is going to be what uh, progress the Catholic right make on coming to aid them. Let's now have a look at them. So clearly what the uh, Catholic right wish to do is to start moving towards uh, uh, the Protestant uh, right uh, to uh, uh, start attacking them. This uh, cavalry unit here can attempt to engage with the artillery here. Uh, these infantry can try and turn to face the other way and the other cavalry can move forward. So let's now um, look to see how they might do that. So for this unit here, uh, what it's going to try to do is it's going to try and change facing or formation to face in uh, that direction. Uh, that uh, is an action test and early tercios fail on a uh, 1 to a 4. So they roll a dice and score 2 uh, and they have failed. Uh, the command is too far away so they'll have to wait for this turn. Uh, the next Tercio along is also going to try and do the same and will also fail on a 1 to a 4 for it's also failed. Uh, this is the problem with early Tercios, uh, they're not very manoeuvrable uh, unless they're going straight forward. Uh, meanwhile, uh, this unit here is going to uh, wheel to face in the direction of the artillery uh, and then move forward to contact it. So uh, because it's a Karasi unit, uh, Karasi has uh, failed to manoeuvre on 1 to 3, so it rolls a dice and scores 2 and succeeds in wheeling to face. Uh, it then moves forward into contact. Uh, the unit does not need to take a, um, a, a, a test to close uh, with the artillery, to contact the artillery, uh, because it is going into the flank. Uh, you only need to take a uh, movement to, into contact uh, test if you're going in frontally. Uh, this unit here is going to uh, move to try and uh, provide support. Uh, so that will fail on, uh, fail to wheel first of all, which is a 1, 2 or 3. It's failed um, and can't do any more. Uh, meanwhile, the units at the back here, uh, they uh, can wheel and start to move this way as well. So this unit here uh, is uh, a, a cross unit, so that uh, fails on a 1, 2 or 3. Uh, so it's failed, but it has its commander nearby, so it'll have a second chance, and it's failed again. So again, you can see um, the disadvantage of having relatively unmaneuverable cavalry. Finally, these Archibuses are going to try and uh, wheel as well, and they also fail on a 1, 2 or 3, uh, so they've succeeded. So they can move like so and start heading in that direction so i think you can see that uh, that they're going to uh it's going to take a time for them uh, to get there but they're going to get there eventually uh, let's now do the combat let's start here with the artillery artillery has uh two morale failures uh, if it is in normal circumstances but if it is in contact with an opposing unit it only has one uh, therefore it's as you can imagine it's very vulnerable uh, to being overrun. So uh, the, uh, the uh, artillery counts is trained uh, but it has been contacted by um, uh, these crashes which gives it a minus one. The crashes are also uh, to their flank and uh, in contact with the flank and also artillery gets minus one if it's in contact with artillery. So that's a grand total of minus four, minus one for being uh, contacted by crashes minus one uh, for being in contact with cavalry, minus another one for having a unit to the flank, and minus a, f a further one for uh, being the, having a unit actually in touch, in uh, contact with their flank. Uh, so uh, they're all uh, minus four, and they've rolled eight, minus four is four, so they take one hit, which is enough uh, to destroy them. So they're taken off the table. On this flank, uh, I think the artillery this turn is going to uh, fire against this cavalry. It can just about target them uh, and attempt to cause some damage there. 
<clears throat> Let's first of all though do the uh, infantry fire exchange, which should be fairly straightforward. If you remember, uh, this unit gets plus three, uh, that's plus one, uh, for being better at firing, plus one for the support and plus one for being elite. This one just gets plus two because he did not elite. So with uh, plus three to the dice, uh, this unit scores five, uh, plus three is eight, so that passes. And uh, this one here gets plus two, and it scores six, uh, plus two, which is again eight, and passes. Uh, things are not so easy for this unit here, though. Uh, it's going to gain uh, plus one for having rear support, uh, but it's going to get an awful lot of minuses. So it gets minus one for cavalry being under fire. Uh, it gets another minus one for having uh, two additional uh, uh, units uh, engaging it. So it has the uh, Harkibusiers, the infantry and the artillery all engaging it. So that's minus three. Uh, they get another minus one for having this unit behind the flank. And also this unit is attacking them from behind the flank. So that's a grand total of minus five. Uh, so with the plus one for the rear support, it's minus four overall. Uh, so they rolled four. That would be uh, dead. Uh, we will um, attach the commander and have another attempt. And... Oh, dear. Uh, so that unit is, is uh, uh, routed. And uh, that Swedish commander is... Uh, temporarily out of the game. Okay. I think at this point I, I would call the game uh, and, uh, and admit defeat for the Protestant forces. Uh, uh, admittedly their, their army, uh, their wing is still reasonably intact, uh, but uh, now their commander has, uh, has gone. Uh, they, the commander will, will come back at the end of the next go, but they will need to roll to see what quality is. Perhaps if I roll for that, let's have a look. So I rolled a two, so that means the new commander is going to be a zero commander. Um, I think that's, that is definitely uh, the end of the game. Um, hopefully that's given you some kind of flavour of how the rules work. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, it's very in intuitive, um, I believe. Um, the, uh, some people seem to be put off by uh, the number of uh, factors which might apply, but the thing to remember is that the vast majority of cases it's, it's going to be fairly obvious which factors do and don't apply and of course as I said at the beginning you won't usually have such a variety of uh, troop types in a game, although of course you might do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope uh, if you have any questions you'll uh, contact me either um, here or directly. Thank you very much for watching.